Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about NASA crashing the DART spacecraft into an asteroid. As many of you will know, I am a science nerd and I love doing these type of things. I'm going to read an article. I will put the link in the descriptions. I usually read it word for word and maybe chime in here and there. There's a wonder I have with space and exploration, and I've actually talked about this debate about the money and, you know, what's more important, us on Earth and whatever. Putting that aside, things like this really amaze me, they intrigue me, they get me really thinking about the future. And in this case, NASA crashes the DART spacecraft into an asteroid in world's first planetary defense test. This is by Tariq Malik. And like I said, I'll put the link in the description, but really I'll just go through it. I get excited about these things. I'll go word for word for the most part. I'll begin. For the first time in history, a spacecraft from Earth has crashed into an asteroid to test a way to save our planet from extinction. The spacecraft, NASA's double asteroid, Rendezvous test, DART, probe, slammed into a small asteroid 7 million miles, 11 million kilometers from Earth. Tonight, September 26th, in what the U.S. Space Agency has billed as the world's first planetary defense test. The goal, to change the orbit of a space rock called Dimorphos around its larger asteroid parent, Didymos. <laughs> Enough to prove humanity could deflect a dangerous asteroid if one was headed for Earth. By the way, I point this out every once in a while, there are highlighted, underlined blue words that are linked themselves to even more information. So, DART, we can do that. The asteroid that we're hitting, the planetary defense, that type of thing. Quote, as far as we can tell, our first planetary defense test was a success, said Elena Adams, DART's mission systems engineer, here at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Ooh, boy. Uh, who alp? <laughs> After the successful crash. Quote again. I think Earthling should sleep better. Definitely, I will. That's something the dinosaurs couldn't do 65 million years ago when the massive... Chikulub asteroid <laughs> slammed into the Yucatan Peninsula and led to their extinction. By the way, that's also highlighted. You can hit the link to find out about the asteroid. Quote, the dinosaurs didn't have a space program to help them, but we do. Catherine Calvin, NASA's chief scientist and senior climate advisor, said before the crash. So DART represents important progress in understanding potential hazards in the future, and how to protect our planet from potential impacts. The golf-sized DART spacecraft slammed into Dimorphos at 7.14 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, while flying at a whopping 14,000 miles per hour, 22,500 kph. The spacecraft wasn't large as probes go, but NASA hoped that it's 1,320 pounds, 600 kilograms, would be enough to move the 534 foot wide, 163 meters, dimorphous a bit faster in its orbit around its parent. Quote, the spacecraft is very small, said planetary scientist Nancy Traubot, dark coordination lead at J-U-A-J-H-U-A-P-L. Oof. Yes, this is me messing up the English language again. Which oversees the mission for NASA before the impact. Quote, sometimes we describe it as running a golf cart into the Great Pyramid. <laughs> Despite the on-target crash, there was a mix of calm and anticipation at DART's Mission Control Center at JUAPL. As the spacecraft sped towards its destruction. 
Nothing went wrong during the crash, so engineers didn't have to try one of the 21 different contingency plans they had in their hip pocket. Much of DART's last four hours were automated, with the spacecraft's navigation system locking onto Dimorphos in the final hour of its approach. DART's main camera beamed a photo to Earth every second until the feed went black as the spacecraft crashed into the asteroid. Quote, It's nerve-wracking. Andy Chang, chief scientist for planetary defense at JHUAPL, <laughs> said of the final days before the crash, he came up with the DART missions concept in 2011. The 313 million DART mission launched on November 23rd, 2021. As DART closed in on Dimorphos, the asteroid transformed from a mysterious bright dot into a detailed landscape of boulders, crags, and shadow terrain. Then, right on time, the live feed from DART went black and flight controllers inside DART's missions operations center jumped for joy and traded hugs and high fives in a triumphant celebration. DART hit the asteroid bullseye. Quote, I think all of us were kind of holding our breath, Adam said, adding that it was like feeling terror and joy at the same time. I'm kind of surprised none of us passed out. <laughs> a, spacecraft, a spacecraft crash for planetary defense. The DART mission is the first demonstration of what NASA calls a kinetic impactor for planetary defense. Crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid to change its orbit. Its basic method to protect the Earth if a potentially dangerous asteroid was spotted 5 or 10 years before a, pro a prospective impact. Quote, We are changing the motion of a natural celestial body in space. Humanity has never done that before, said Tom Stotler, NASA's DART program scientist. This is the stuff of science fiction books and really corny episodes of Star Trek. From when I was a kid and now, it's real. By the way, I am the Star Trek nerd playing the Star Trek game. Um, this is, again, me interjecting, but it's so awe-inspiring to see these images that it captured and the whole concept. One of the biggest things we talk about in some fields, like I'm some kind of pro or something, but is the general thing about, yeah, we want to cure hunger, world hunger, and homelessness, and have equality in almost every aspect. But you know what doesn't give a fuck about that? Space, and asteroids, and celestial bodies, and all that jazz, because it doesn't matter. We are insignificant, and something like this could ruin the best laid plans. So I am so excited about these type of things. I'll continue. The risk of a catastrophic asteroid impact on Earth is remote, but real. NASA scientists have said, NASA has found about 40% of the large asteroids as wide as 500 feet, 140 meters, that could pose a threat to the Earth and regularly scans the sky for more. NASA is also developing a new space telescope sentinel called the Near Earth Object Surveyor, specifically designed to seek out hazardous asteroids in the solar system. That mission could launch by 2026. But humanity also needs to have methods to deflect a hazardous asteroid should one be detected. Hence DART, quote, we're really excited every time our space missions protect life on Earth. Thomas Zerberchen, NASA's Associate Administrator for Science, told Space.com this morning. NASA picked Dimorphos, a moonlit of Didymos, I am not even saying that right. But a dot, dot impact for a few reasons. First, the moonlet is part of a binary system and orbits its parent once every 11 hours and 55 minutes. A short enough time that any change in its orbit should be apparent in ground-based telescopes and follow-up observations. Didymos and Dimorphos were discovered in 1996 and 2003, respectively and are the first binary asteroid system to be studied in detail. Using a binary asteroid system, rather than a solitary asteroid, meant that NASA could use a single spacecraft supported by ground telescopes to measure the asteroid deflection, instead of requiring an expensive second spacecraft, 
Cheng said. While classified as a potentially hazardous asteroid, Didymos and Dimorphos poses no threat of impacting Earth in the foreseeable future, which NASA measures in decades and centuries. DART was expected to accelerate Dimorphos just about 10 minutes faster in its orbit around Didymos, posing no risk of changing the binary system's orbit to come anywhere near Earth. And at just 7 million miles away, Didymos and Dimorphos are at their closest to Earth that they'll be for the next 40 years. It takes a signal just 38 seconds to make the one-way trip from the dot to the Earth, NASA has said. So it's the right asteroid at the right time, and that time is now, Chabot said. Dimorphos is also the sweet spot for astronomers in that its size is similar to those asteroids NASA is most worried about for Earth impacts. It is also what NASA calls an S-type asteroid, a rocky variety that is one of the most common asteroids in our solar system. Quote, We do think something like DART would be big enough to divert Dimorphos-sized asteroid, planetary scientist Mallory DaCosta, a modeler with DART's impact working group at JHUAPL, told reporters in the hours before impact. Still, DART is a first-of-its-kind mission and the mission scientists didn't know exactly what to expect at Dimorphos. Is the asteroid a solid mass of rock, or more of a sandy rubble pile? And what was its exact shape? Variables like those can determine how effective a dart-like asteroid deflection will be. During dart's final moments, photos from the spacecraft revealed stunning details of both Didymos and Dimorphos. The moonlet had never been seen before. Dart revealed it as a strange new world, an egg-shaped asteroid covered in boulders and uneven terrain. Quote, It really looks just amazing, said Carol Ernst, Dart's Draco camera instrument scientist at JHUAPL. It's like adorable. It's this little moon. It's so cute. <laughs> Angela Stickle. The leader of DART's impact working group at JHUAPL said the team's simulations and models suggest the spacecraft would likely create a crater up to 65 feet, 20 millimeters, 20 miles wide, or 20 m wide. Oh boy. Quote, we do expect it to fragment quite catastrophically. Catastrophically. Stickle said of the DART spacecraft when it hits the target. There is certainly the possibility that pieces of dart may be left on Dimorphos. Just hitting Dimorphos was a feat of engineering, NASA said, with the dart spacecraft sending a photo every second as it closed in on its target. The spacecraft also had witnesses to its demise. In the weeks before its impact, dart released a small CubeSat called, oh boy. Likai Cube, L I C I A C U B E, to follow in its wake and observe the asteroid crash. The photos of that CubeSat should reach Earth in the days after the impact and reveal close up images of the impact and the ejecta it kicked up from Dimorphos. Well, so that's cool. So they have a, a satellite chasing it and recording it. It's fucking awesome. All right. Did humanity's first planetary defense test succeed? Other spacecraft also watched the crash. NASA's new James Webb Telescope, I did a podcast on that, and the Hubble Space Telescope, and the Lucy spacecraft on its own asteroid mission all tracked the crash from their respective vantage points across the solar system. On Earth, a vast network of ground-based telescopes were trained on the event and will be following the binary did the most Dimorphos system over time to see how much faster Dimorphos is now moving in its orbit. Quote, Our requirements are for 73 seconds, but we actually think we're going to change it by about 10 minutes, Statler said. Or Statler said. It will take time to know if the dot impact was successful as a planetary defense test. 
more than three dozen telescopes around the world, including at least one on every continent, will be tracking the Didymos Dimorphos asteroid system over the next six months to understand exactly how effective the test was. The first radar observations of the impact could come as early as Tuesday, September 27th, said Christina Thomas, a planetary scientist with North Arizona University who leads the DART Observations Working Group. Quote, we're going to be observing Didymos until it's no longer observable, Thomas said. DART mission scientists added that they should know definitively, definitively how much DART moved Dimorphos in the next two months. The observation campaign has brought in volunteer student and university groups around the world, each hoping to add their observations to the DART effort. Quote, There's a lot of them. Thomas said of the number of ground-based telescope teams, it's very exciting to have lost count. The European Space Agency is planning its own mission to the Didymos Dimorphos asteroid system to follow up on the DART's impact. That mission, called HERA, will launch a spacecraft to the asteroid in 2024 and actually orbit the binary asteroid system by 2027 to study the space rocks and the crater on the Dimorphos created by DART. The technology of hitting the asteroid is really a challenge, Chabot told reporters before the crash. But, but there is a lot that happens after that. Wow. So this is an article by Tariq Malik. Tariq Malik. It's on space.com. Again, I love these type of things. To think that going into space is a waste of time, maybe Mars, whatever. But this is something I don't think people are going to debate about. I think... These are the real dangers that we could try to avoid that we cannot have any control over. Yes, we can try to evolve and become a greater society and civilization and take out homelessness and world hunger, treat people, treat each other better, have equal equality rights for everybody around the world, and we can be headed towards one of the brightest futures ever envisioned for this planet, and it all could be ruined by asteroids. Things crashing into our planet. And I'm sorry if this is where my science religion slant goes, but no fucking God gives a fuck enough to do anything about them. And the bullshit argument that we're the result of that, blah, 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 who gives a fuck? It's all bullshit. We need science. We need observations like this. We need the study of celestial objects to protect our future decades, hundreds of years in the future. I think we can accomplish things like this. And when we work everything out, these things might be the things that keep us ahead of the game, ahead of this universe and space and cosmos that doesn't care about us. Again, this is like a comedy thing, routine, I think, but we're on a spaceship called Earth, hurtling through space at a certain speed, spinning around, all in relation to the galaxy that we're in that's spinning around and it's part of this huge tapestry and our thoughts our beliefs our convictions they don't matter to this universe our awareness of who we are that might make us special as humans well this is where it leads this is why i believe space exploration is so important what would be the purpose of us reaching our brightest future if the universe doesn't care and sends one of these asteroids to smash into us. It's a lot to think about. So again, I hope everybody enjoys these podcasts. Science Nerd 1 here. I guess that'll be my outro. <laughs> everybody, I hope you're doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.